Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar for agencies who have been approved for grant funds through Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquencies Local Law Enforcement Grant Program. I am John Polheber. I want to work in the Office of Justice Programs, Criminal Justice System Improvements. First up, a few housekeeping rules and some reminders. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted on PCCD's website, along with a copy of PowerPoint slides from today's session. Please keep, keep your audio settings. Check your audio settings to make sure you're able to hear today's presentation using your computer or other device. We will not be able to hear you. In the live event, Q&A feature located in the upper right side of your screen, please click into the SurveyMonkey link, enter your name, along with your grant ID number, and select Done. This, this is so you will get credit for participating in today's, part, in today's presentation. The Q&A section should only be used for this purpose. We also suggest that you please have something nearby to jot notes so you can write questions as you think of them during our overview. We will not be provide, providing a question and answer session at the end of this pr presentation, but for any questions that you may have pertaining to the slides, please reach out directly to your assigned PCCD program or fiscal staff after today's presentation. Also, I'm joined today by several other PCCD team members who are supporting today's webinar, including members from our program and fiscal staff. Other team members presenting in today's webinar include Michael Leister and Mike Fowler. I'd like to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael Leister, the reentry coordinator here at PCCD in the Office of Justice Programs, and I'll hand it over to Mike. Yes, and I'm Mike Fowler, and I work in the Office of Financial Management. I'm a manager, and I oversee the monitoring, the fiscal monitoring of our grantees. Thank you both. Next slide, please. As you know, $135 million in American Rescue Plan funds was made available to support the local law enforcement support grant program. This program was established within PCCD as part of Act 54 of 2022, and per the requirements of the Act, PCCD was required to prioritize funding to areas with high rates of violent crime or low clearance rates. The process was highly competitive and 293 applicants were approved for all or part of the requested funding. We want to thank all of you for working with PCCD staff on budget modifications and e-grants since the majority of budgets needed reduced. We are unaware of whether there will be additional funding in, uh, in upcoming budgets. However, our goal is to show you to show, excuse me, to show the legislature and governor's office all the great work you, you, that you are able to do with this funding. If we do, we may be able to demonstrate an ongoing need. Next slide, please. As for today's agenda, we'll provide a brief overview of PCCD, and then we'll provide an overview of grant expectations and discuss grantee requirements and timelines. Okay, next slide, please. For those of you who may be less familiar with our agency, we want to provide a quick overview of the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, or PCCD. Our agency was established in 1978 through Pennsylvania state law and serves as a Commonwealth's justice planning and policy making agency. Our mission is to enhance the quality, coordination, and planning within the criminal and juvenile justice systems to facilitate the delivery of services to victims of crime and to increase the safety of our communities. We are a relatively small agency, state agency housed with an executive office with approximately 150 employees working across four offices. We are directed by an overarching commission board, which is advised by seven different advisory committees and two training boards. As you can see on this slide, PCCD's responsibilities and programs fall into a number of different areas, including funding and grants, technical assistance, data and research, victims compensation, and training among other responsibilities. If you are interested in learning more about these areas, I encourage you to check out our website at www.pccd.pa.gov. 
gov, G O V. Okay, next slide, please. So this slide shows you the roles of the PCCs, the staff that are assigned to assist to your grant. As noted on the slide, for questions and concerns regarding various aspects of your grant, please direct your questions to the appropriate PCDs, PCCD staff. Next slide, please. If this is your agency's first grant award with PCCD, this slide provides you with the basic requirements as a grantee. If your agency keeps on track, according to these requirements, your grant will, award will be successful. One of the key points to remember is that PCCD grants are reimbursement based. In other words, money isn't provided upfront for projected expenses. Grantees can only receive reimbursement funding for actual expenses approved by PCCD. When a grant is awarded, the award letter will be approved and signed by PCCD. You will receive e-grants notific notification in your work manager when the award letter is uploaded and ready to be signed by the authorized recipient authority for your agency. If your agency hasn't already signed and uploaded your official award letter, please do so as soon as possible. Next slide, please. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Michael Leister to uh, speak about submitting quarterly uh, reports. Thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, so we're going to jump into reporting requirements for your grant award. Uh, and in addition to these slides, there are links to walkthrough guides on PCCT's website. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a screenshot taken from the login page of eGrants. If you haven't done so already, you want to ensure that you can successfully log into the grant system. Uh, please note that there are two different help desks depending on what your issue is. Uh, so if you're having issues with logging in, uh, please call the Keystone Login Help Desk. This could be due to migration issues uh, to Keystone Login if you already had a pre-existing eGrants account. For all other eGrants issues, please contact eGrants Help Desk at the email or phone number provided um, on the login page. Next slide, please. So after the last day of the quarter, it's going to be time for you to log into eGrants and submit your quarterly reports. And this is the screen uh, that shows when you log in. So once you log in, you're going to click on the first click here link to access your existing PCPD grants. And so while we have this screen up, I also wanted to note uh, the first click here link um, is where you go to submit a project modification request or a PMR. The second link is used to start a new application. The third link takes you to your work manager, which functions as the to do list for this specific grant. Uh, the content here mirrors, mirrors the reminder emails that you will receive from PCCD. The fourth link is for user access request when you add new staff. Some staff changes can also be accomplished by calling the help desk or your program staff contact. The fifth link allows you to sign up for email notifications uh, of all PCCD grant opportunities and announcements. And the last link is to unsubscribe from the email listing. Any special announcements are found at the bottom of the page in red font. Next slide, please. Uh, so here is where you will enter your grant ID uh, for which you submit, which you wish to submit a report, uh, and you'll click search. <clears throat> if you don't have your grant ID handy, you can type in the agency name in the recipient agency box, select search, and you'll be provided with a list of all the applications that that recipient has received. Next slide, please. Quarterly reporting is required throughout the life of your grant. Uh, your grants will allow you to start entering your quarterly reports a few days prior to the end of the quarter. The content must be entered and submitted, and please don't forget to click the submit button uh, 20 days after the end of the quarter. The daily alerts will be sent to you via email and they won't stop until you complete your reporting. Uh, we just also wanted to note that a final report summarizing the entire implementation will be due at the end of your project period. 
you only want to choose the final report option once the grant uh, is expended, um, and that can be done if that happens before the end date. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is just a chart um, that you may want to keep handy that highlights uh, the reporting periods and then the due dates for reports. Uh, I did want to note um, that we just concluded the first quarter of the year from January 1st to March 31st, um, and those reports are due in the ERN system on April 20th. For any grantees that currently have their grants awarded, uh, those have a January 1 start. So on April 20th, you're required to submit your program and fiscal reports in the ERN system, regardless if you had activity or not. Uh, for any grantees that are still working with PCCD staff to finalize issues and get their grants in awarded status, um, when your grant is awarded, uh, you will immediately start receiving delinquent notices from the grant system about your program and fiscal reports. Um, so you will not be able to submit those reports until after the grant is awarded. Um, but when the grant is in awarded status, you're going to want to focus on getting those program and fiscal reports submitted, even if there was no activity during that first quarter. Next slide, please. Uh, so your report, quarterly report should give staff at PCCD a solid overview of the activities that you conducted during the three months you're reporting on. Uh, so what was good and should be replicated? Uh, what didn't go well and needs to be revisited before the next report? Did a new implementation start or end during the quarter? Were there recruitment successes or challenges? Uh, here's where you talk about it. Um, so also please know that a thorough summary is rarely accomplished in one sentence. Um, it may be to your benefit to create your quarterly reports in a Word document and then cut and paste that information into eGrants. Um, in a Word document, you can more easily observe the word count limits as the eGrants text boxes are space limited. Um, again, you'll only want to choose the final report option uh, once the grant is expended, if that happens before the end date. Um, some answers to questions don't necessarily need to be comprehensive, and your response could technically be non-applicable. Um, and just again, wanted to remind you that you will receive eGrants e reminders um, as well as delinquent notices if reports are not due or submitted 20 days after the conclusion of the quarter. Next slide, please. So this is the slide that presents after you have chosen the appropriate grant ID. Uh, you will click the top link to enter update or view a program, fiscal, or inventory report. Next slide, please. And clicking that will take you to this page, uh, and you'll see its main summary at the top. Uh, this is actually the monitoring page for your grant. Um, and so if you're entering a program report, you'll scroll to, scroll to the bottom of the page and click the Create Program Report button. Uh, if you're entering a fiscal report, again, you'll scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll click the Create Fiscal Report button. Uh, these report uh, buttons are also at the top of your screen. Uh, and if you would like to, to view a previously submitted report, you can either click on the date, uh, which is the red oval on this slide, uh, or on the little printer icon, which is the blue circle. Next slide, please. So after you've selected the Create Program Report button, it will take you to this screen, uh, and this is your program report. So you're going to work your way down the page, taking your time to answer each of the questions accurately, and then you'll also have to complete each section listed within the program report. Uh, so each of the report sections must be marked as complete before you can submit your report. Uh, so for all program reports, um, the questions at the beginning will be the same. Uh, so first we'll ask if the project is on schedule uh, and you'll have a drop down box to select yes or no. Uh, question 1A is if the, the response to question number one was no, uh, we'll ask you to explain why the project is not on schedule. Uh, then question number two asks you to briefly list activities conducted during the period. Uh, so the recommendation for the completion of this question is at least three full sentences. 
Um, and then that takes us to the report sections. Uh, so this is the area where you will find sections that must be completed as part of your program report. The required report sections will look a little bit differently in your program report, uh, but this slide does give you an idea of how it's laid out in e-grants. Uh, some of you may also have specific numericals tied to your grant, and the performance indicators uh, section is where you will document how you're progressing towards those goals. Um, again, a final report link will only be used when you're submitting your final report. Next slide, please. So as this slide states, performance measures are a very important aspect of the grants. Uh, gives you the opportunity to show the impact of your grant funding. Uh, so performance measures we've assigned to your grants are found both in the performance measures section and in the local law enforcement grant program quarterly report section, uh, which will be listed in the report section of your program report as discussed in the previous slide. DCCD research staff will be tracking violent crime and clearance rates based on the data submitted to PSP via UCR and NIBRS. Uh, PCCD research staff will also be using the data that you submit through your quarterly reports to provide updates as requested to the legislature, to the governor's office, uh, on the very successes of the program and the usefulness of the funding provided. Next slide, please. So this slide describes the types of information that you'll be asked to provide in the performance measure section of your report. There are eight general performance measures listed in these slides that you must complete each quarter uh, of your grant as part of your program report. Uh, these will all be questions that have numeric responses. And next slide, please. And so in addition to the general performance measures, uh, your specific grant may have additional performance measures created that you will be required to report on each quarter. And next slide, please. Uh, so this slide describes the types of information you'll be asked to provide in the report section, local law enforcement grant uh, program quarterly report. Uh, this section asks specific questions according to which categories you were approved for as part of your grant. If your agency was not approved for the category listed, please answer no to the first question uh, and then go on to the next category and repeat. Some of the questions are geared for a narrative response to show if the grant project has had any impact on your agency. Next slide, please. Uh, so this slide is a continuation of the local law enforcement grant program quarterly report slide. Uh, it shows the questions for each of the categories of the grant. And just a reminder, this presentation will be turned into a PDF document and provided for you uh, for your convenience. Uh, the next several slides show the questions that are asked in e-grants pertaining to each of the five categories uh, that you've been approved for. So next slide, please. Uh, this slide is a continuation of the local law enforcement grant program quarterly report slide. Uh, these are the category four measures. Next slide, please. Again, this is a continuation of the local law enforcement grant program quarterly report. Um, this includes the first half of the category five measures. Next slide, please. And this is the remainder of the category five measures in the local law enforcement grant program quarterly report. Next slide. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Fowler and he's going to talk to you about fiscal reports. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to go over how to submit the fiscal reports. As John stated before, PCCD grants are paid on a reimbursement basis only. Next slide. For fiscal quarterly reporting, only expenditures which have occurred in the prior three month reporting period should be reported in the expenses paid column. To accomplish this, you can click on the individual budget category hyperlink and enter these detail, this detailed information of your expenditures. And then the cumulative expenditure column is automatically populated with the sum of all expenditures reported for your grant. And in addition, you'll also need to enter the amount of expenditures by funding source 
In this case, the funding source is federal, so the total of the funding source must match exactly the total of the, your expenditure categories. Next slide. Periodic expenditures are entered into each item. Uh, please note you will only be able to enter in expenditures in budget categories with the line items. And when all the line item expenditures are entered, the total by category appears on the fiscal report. Next. The fiscal requirements for all grantees. Uh, next slide, please. Our team has uploaded a PowerPoint presentation they used on a new grantee orientation. And this page is a learning objectives for that presentation. The e-grants format look is a little outdated. However, the information is very much relevant. We encourage you to copy and paste the link at the bottom of the slide and to watch that pre-recorded WebEx presentation. Next slide. This is what the cover of the latest applicant's manual looks like. Uh, please note the date of the current edition is March 2023. So if you're using something older than that, we encourage you to either print out this document, this document or keep uh, this uh, on your computer for easy access. And in addition, much of what you will call in to ask your program or fiscal staff is already answered in this manual. So if you copy and paste it from the website above, it'll take you directly to the current applicant's manual. Next slide. Again, uh, PCCD pays out on a reimbursement basis only. Um, grantees must maintain supporting documentation for all report all reported expenditures, and the fiscal reports must be submitted on a quarterly, um, even if there are no expenditures occurred. And uh, want to stress that the uh, second bullet cannot be stressed enough. For example, if you budget it for iPads and submit it for fiscal reimbursement after purchasing those iPads, then you should be prepared to show evidence of that purchase. In addition, you could be randomly selected for monitoring, and at that time, proof of purchase would need to be presented. And if during an on-site monitoring, your program or fiscal staff may ask to see it, the items that you purchase in your application. And if you're not able to show that proof, it could jeopardize the future of your grant award. In addition, if during the three month quarter, you incur an expense that needs fast payment, we uh, encourage you to submit an interim fiscal report prior to the quarterly reports. And an interim fiscal report does not require a submission of a program report, but it does require an explanation. Again, interim reports are not limited to quarterly only. If money needs to turn around more quickly, then we suggest that you submit an interim report. Next. This is some other fiscal ad advice. Um, we want to make sure that you understand that you do have to maintain an accounting system that can segregate all PCCD grant expenditures and income from all other sources of income expenditures within your organization. And that all your expenditure all your expenditures must be made within and invoiced within the project period. And that the the all project activities, including contracted services and training, must take place also within that project period. Next. And this is just some uh, information on what uh, the documentation that you need to keep on file to um, successfully manage your grant award. And some of those are purchase orders, receiving records, invoices, canceled checks, et cetera. Next slide. And this is just going over the invoices, and this is what's generally required of all invoices, and, and usually they're on there, but we're just kind of um, wanting to let you reinforce what needs to be on each invoice that you're submitting for reimbursement. Next slide. And these are the walkthrough guides that will prove to be very helpful to you. Although they, although they reference a different funding stream, these guides 
are very helpful in navigating a grants. Next slide. And this slide shows the options that are available on our PCCD website. This slide is a little outdated, but the information is still correct. So if you go to our website and click on funding, you can navigate through the grant procedures in forms that you may need. And if needed, you can always reach out to us for assistance. Next slide. And this is the uh, um, unfortunate aspect of awarding grant awards. Not everyone that is awarded has the capacity to implement these projects. So last minute changes or shifts in priorities or leadership can all make implementing a new grant challenging. However, before you decide to terminate or withdraw, we ask that you talk to your PCCD program staff. There may be other support options that are available to you. However, if you do find yourself or the agency in one of the previously mentioned situations, you may decide to terminate or withdraw the grant. And if you do, we need, we'll need a letter stating your decision to terminate or withdraw, and it should be made on company letterhead, and it should be signed by someone within your organization with signatory authority. And with that, I want to turn this back over to John. Thank you, Mike. So just to do a quick review, the, the information we've presented and you will have available for you in a PDF document. We covered the roles of PCCD, quarterly program reports, including, pro, including performance measures, quarterly fiscal reports, and such. And one more slide, please. If you have questions, please contact your assigned PCD, PCCD program and fiscal staff. We'd like to thank you for joining us for today's webinar. A recording this, of the webinar will be made available on PCCD's website, along with a PDF document of the slideshow. Thank you.